This episode is sponsored by Full Bucket Veterinary Strength Supplements. Use promo code CHATFIELDS to receive 20% off your first order from Full Bucket Veterinary Strength Supplements. Welcome to this episode of Chats with the Chatfields. This is a podcast to expand your idea of what impacts veterinarians, pet owners, and basically all animal lovers in the galaxy as humans. We're your co-hosts. I'm Dr. Jen the Vet. And I'm Dr. Jason. And if you have not yet subscribed to our show, why not? Just go to chatfieldshow.com and subscribe today. And if you want to reach us, you can find me with any message of love and positivity at jen at chatfieldshow.com. And for everyone else that has real messages, real questions, you can reach me at jason at chatfieldshow.com. Okay, into the chat room we go. I always say that with such gusto, right? I you love do. Saying it. You yes, come real... reach me with some real questions. Save the world. Real messages. Whatever. As if that's what you're doing on a daily basis, Every Jason, day. is saving the world. All right, I'm sorry. Yeah. I digress. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You do, but that's okay. Yeah. Everyone has a superpower. Yep. So uh, today, I'm, I'm kind of excited. So, th this is, so this is going to be an episode in our series that's called Chats with the chat fields, them's, them's the, rules. the rules. Them's the rules, not yeah. Not them's the rules. That would be bad. Them yeah. with the th, right? Them's the them's rules. Them's the rules. Gotcha. Yes. All right. We're not bending the rules. No. We're stating Nothing them like that. as they are. We're talking about the rules, and so because uh, you know I do love rules. Yeah. So you know where you're gonna break them. Is that why you like them? Or how no. far to push it? Or I like I like to know I like to know where the lines are. Yeah, we have to have order. We have to have some rules. It's yes. it's, it's an unfortunate fact of life. We have to have rules. It is. I love that you just said order because today's guest, um, uh, I'm excited about for multiple reasons. But today, today into the chat room, we have it. We have an expert in rules. Well, thank goodness, because it wasn't going to be me. <laughs> it is. Sure. It is definitely not you. But, uh, but she's an expert in all kinds of rules, and uh, so her name is Stephanie Shipley, and she is with. Wait for it. Paw and order. I love it. I love it. I know. All I right. know. I won't steal her thunder. She should come on and tell us all about what's happening. That's right. Stephanie, get in the chat room. Welcome. Yeah. How are you? I, you know what? If I was any better, I'd have to be you guys. Uh, I mean, that's, oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> what? <laughs> I, I am so excited to be in the chat room. I like, oh. I, and, and by all of our email message, like, I'm just like, I want to be in this chat room. I need to be there. Well, so we, are yeah. fire, we are definitely fired up to have you. That's right. And we need you here because you need definitely to bring some paw and order to Dr. Jason. That's right. Right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Sorry, we'll lay down them rules. That's fine. Okay. <laughs> That's right. Okay, okay. Okay, so we have so we have paw and order. But first so first we always have to like get everyone like familiar with right. who it is that's sitting on our proverbial couch here in the chat room. So Stephanie Shipley, Stephanie, you're coming to us from an international locale, are you not? Hi. I am. I am on the east coast of Canada. So in okay. the province of New Brunswick. And uh, we, you know, it's a little bit on the rural side. It's a little bit on the slower side. And we kind of like it that way. And the dogs like it that way. So we're happy. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, we, Wait, you're from, you're from Canada. I am. Uh, okay. So true north, strong and free. And That's no, no, nothing following every sentence with a, none of that stuff. That's a total misconception. Yeah, are you, are I you going to come through the screen and choke me now or what's happening? No, I'm going to toss it somewhere in this next, in this segment, I will toss in an a, uh, <laughs> maybe a, maybe a toque. <laughs> there you, know, you go. For those of you who don't know what a toque is. What is a uh, toque? The, what the, is a toque? Wow. Really? Really? Yeah, is that what, okay. Really? <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's a winter know, hat. Eh? It's a winter hat. Oh, 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 oh. oh okay. we, we also precede words like uh, some, it's like some hot out. So we do that a lot. Um, oh, we love yeah, it. We, we think it's I great. I will apologize. I will apologize over and over. Just For what? You guys feel comfortable. Exactly. Nothing. <laughs> oh, oh I get it. I get it. I get it. You guys <laughs> are super nice, do. right? We just apologize for everything. So, and so I'll, I'll throw in some Canadianism with, you know, Z versus Z. That's yes. important. Process, yes. process. Yes. Yeah, this is so good. Things. You're so self-aware. That's really I great. So. <laughs> it's, it's fantastic. So, 
You know, I have a lot of uh, friends in the United States, ah. and uh, I've just learned these over the, the. So I will, I will throw in a few. Okay, we, could, we have to prove that you're actually from Canada. If you don't use right, all yes. that stuff, you're not right. It's totally fake. It's <laughs> some hot out a. I, I can throw that in. <laughs> okay. No that's need all, for your toque. That's a whole no need for your toque. It's some hot out a. Eh? Right. There so, you go. Are I, you from Canada so, then? All right. As long as everybody's feeling more comfortable with the Canadianisms, I'm good. Yes, with that. We're, we're ready okay. to roll. We can out. now we can now understand the words that are coming out of your mouth, so it's okay. Right. <laughs> right. We'll so, get there. Okay, so uh, I I do appreciate that you uh, have your own like little your own type of vernacular there, but you, like what is paw and order, and where did that come from? Because it's so clever. It's it's my baby. Paw and order <laughs> is my birth child. <laughs> <laughs> so, so paw and order is my brick and mortar facility where we do. Mm-hmm dog boarding, okay. doggy day camp, and private training, group training, and behavioral modification. So that's my, that, and we've been going for, you know, 12 years, Paw and Order wow. has been in existence. Did you say private training, group training, and behavior modification? Correct. Yeah. So do you have a slot for Dr. Jason or? Dr. Jason, yeah. it's for dogs and cats and everything else. You know, Come on, not I for used humans. To, I used to say we only do the the four legged, but I, I mean that's not that's not true. I mean I I rescued and sheltered two legged dogs and cats. Ah, so great. so I'm not opposed to the bipeds. I'm just I'm just <laughs> a, opposed to the ones that speak. Well, my only my only my only requirement is that, is there a chance I'd be top of my class? If there's a chance I could be top of my class going to Pond Order, I might I might I might uh, I might think about it. That's tough because we have a lot of shepherds. Uh, you know, I don't, oh I don't my want gosh. This is oh no my good. gosh, Jason, did you just hear that? <laughs> yes, she was very serious. <laughs> she was I'm there was no too. joking. <laughs> <laughs> That's well, we're not gonna have fun in the chat room. Oh my oh. gosh. Oh come on now. Yeah. Uh, okay. If we're if we're in the chat room, we're having a good time, right? Um, Absolutely. I know, and I love how you just one hundred percent embrace that today. Um, like gold star. Uh, so, okay. So power and order, and that's your brick and mortar. So, yep. um, that must mean you have something besides that because <laughs> you did. said that's my brick and mortar. Yeah. So there's something else. There is something else. So the a second organization that I started about five years ago is called higher pause. And higher it pause. is, it is the organization that I do my, I'm a, I'm a certified pet tech first aid and CPR instructor. So I do the courses through there. I'm oh. an international consultant for pet care facilities. So I have clients all over North America that I fly to and help them with wow. their operational challenges. Um, how fun I, is that? Like how I do fun cons- is that? Yeah. I'm a professional public speaker at uh, the IBPSA conference, Atlanta Pet Fair, and I do not necessarily all pet stuff. So mm-hmm. sometimes I'm hired by other organizations to do leadership training or so my life before paw and order dun, dun, was mm-hmm. human resources for a hospitality company. Oh, but, yeah, very was, nice. all, was all kinds all all the gamut of a ton of stuff. But let me let me get this so you get a phone call and they say, Hey Stephanie, can you come? We're down here in San Diego, California and we have a a doggy daycare, but we don't really know what we're doing. Can you come sh- tell us how we can improve our doggy daycare or how we can improve yep. our training? And, and, and you're, the, you're the fixer, huh? Yep, I'm the fixer. Wow. Ooh, I'm the fixer. fixer. I get on the plane and go down and try to help the – You know, She's when I – a when real I, life fixer. I, I know, that. right? This is fantastic. Just once you figure out all the answers, I'm like, I don't want somebody else to have to go through all of the time and money <laughs> that you figure out what kind of floor you should put down before right. in a facility. Like, so I just yeah. no point in reinventing the wheel, correct? Exactly. Right. No, so no, so yeah, exactly. I'm that I love fixer. that. I love that, and I love so, that you're you're um, willing to share it with other people. Um, that's yeah. like really fantastic, and uh, it's really okay. rare in pet care. It is. <laughs> I don't what, know why. Sharing is really rare in pet care. Yes. Really? Well, yes. except except. Let's not forget that I do, like infectious disease is my jam. There's a lot of sharing going on nah, in pet care, nah. friends. Right. Like, yeah, right. <laughs> right. Not not in a good way. Yeah, except um, in a bad way. Yeah. Yeah. They kind no. of, it's sort of like proprietary. They want to keep everything. They being the, not Stephanie people, right? Want to keep it to themselves because they think yes. it's um, you know. I don't know. Better for so them. Life, we're, we're all in this for the pets. All right. Exactly. The wellness and, of the pets. 
Like, and I will tell you, life is not a zero sum game. Like, there's no rule that says that um, we can't all be successful together at the same exactly. time. Exactly. So, uh, so there's so that's so tor- the Stephanie Shipley part. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, well, that's what I was getting to. So, so you have, so you have pot and order, we have higher pause. Yep. Um, and then there's another group that you lead and that's part of like, we're getting to the rules, friend. I was wondering when the rules were coming in. Stephanie's going to lay the law down here. All I right. know. I know. Yeah. And uh, listeners can't see this, uh, but she's pointing to, um, she's got a logo on her shirt because always be branding. And always so- be branding. <laughs> There she is. It's PAC. Um, so when we can, so tell me, tell me what the PAC stands for. Okay. So PAC, P-A-C-C-C, for those who are listening on uh, your podcast, P-A-C-C-C, the yes. Professional Animal Care Certification Council. That's what okay. PAC is. And we are a group of passionate people. It's very, very near and dear to my heart because the industry is very near and dear to my heart. That's fantastic. So we're going to take a very quick break and then we're going to come back and we're actually going to hear about what is PAC doing. Yeah, she's, we're going to get some she's more ready coffee. ready for the coffee. She's ready for, oh, for yeah. some coffee. Um, and uh, we might be hearing it right now. Uh, hang with us. We'll be right back. We're going to talk about PAC. With all the fuss happening in the pet food industry, why not invest in something to help guard against digestive health arrangements in your pet? Full Buckets probiotics are formulated by veterinarians to support your pet's normal digestive health. Your pet's gut microbiome is integral to their immune system performance. Why not add Full Buckets daily dog or daily cat probiotic powder to your pet's daily routine? To curate, protect, maintain, and strengthen your pet's microbiome. Visit fullbuckethealth.com today to check out all of their veterinary strength supplements. All right, back in the chat room with Stephanie Shipley, who knows all the answers, um, or at least she's got a good start on them. <laughs> um, so we're going to get into it here. We're going to talk about what is PAC, what does it mean, what does it do, and should you as a dog owner or a pet owner, so any kind, like, should you even know about PAC and what it does? I'm, like, I'm, I'm unclear at this time. So Stephanie. Tell me what. Yeah. Clarify it for Dr. Pack. Jen the vet, please. All right. Yeah. You know what? Like, okay. All right. Let's lay it down real, really. There's two audiences. There's the pet care people in the industry. So if they're listening, there's a different message over there. And then there's the pet parents, which they have the pets. So they are the most important people. Correct. And the pets are the most important guests. Also right? Like the, where this is all about the pets. So it is. So yeah, the, the pet parents really need to know what PAC is. So PAC, nutshell version, you guys, PAC is a certifying body. We are a tester. End stop. Full stop. We are a testing organization. We're not for profit. We are run by a board of volunteers who work thousands and thousands and thousands of hours every year trying to make sure that people are aware of what PAC is and Mm -hmm. how important it is to our industry. So, you know, the pet care industry, billion dollar industry. Six yeah. billion dollar industry, like with a B, right? Like, like <laughs> that's so, right, <laughs> right. So well, I, I look at that, and it, and people want a piece of that pie, and it's not always people with the best intentions. Mm-hmm. And so in our industry, we see all of these little things popping up all over the place. Like, oh, I can take care of somebody's pet in my home, or I can take care of that. And you know what? They're not qualified to do that. So the pet parent is the one that needs to pay attention because the pet parent is the one struggling to say, okay, if I have Fluffy, how do I Mm -hmm. know you know how to take care of Fluffy? And PAC is the organization that if you, I always say, you know, when I'm at trade shows and stuff, if you know what you're doing as far as pet care and you're good at it, then sit for the PAC exam and prove it. And that way the pet parents know and can differentiate who knows what they're doing and who doesn't? That's a nutshell version of PAC. Yeah, but that's, so, super, that's super important because you make a great point. There is, and it's not like it's a new industry, right? It's been around for, nope. for a long time, but it is, it is a giant industry with lots of money. And where there's money, right, there's typically, you know, some bad, some bad players out there. And so what you're saying is so everybody's clear. It, it's a certifying agency that says we have this, 
rules. These are the rules and you got to follow these rules or or at least keep up these standards. Correct. And so it sort of lets you go think if I'm in, I don't know why I'm thinking about San Diego, but if I'm in San Diego Mm -hmm. and and it's a PAC certified place and and I'm traveling to, I don't know, somewhere in Idaho or or in Canada, and it's also a PAC certified place, you can rest assured that at least at least they have the same sort of standards from one place to the other, right? It's a unifying sort of body rather than just all over the place. I think that's important for people to really understand what what that is. And it's a really important um, uh, idea and concept and and fantastic for you guys for doing that. Yeah, well, and you know, every other industry has some type of certification, you know, like, like Dr. Jen, when I see your email, you know, you've got DVM and DCZ, or Z, right? Like, yes. there you go. There's your Canadianism. So, I mean, you have these these letters after your name. You got them. They they didn't just mm-hmm. give them to you because right. you went to school. You you right. got them because you sat for a, a final exam and you were successful and you proved mm-hmm. your body of knowledge. And they gave you those letters, right? right. That you can to a, accreditation. Right. So that's yeah. what we do. We so it's a minimum. So it's a minimum. One. It's a minimum standard of care. Right. Yes. And I, I don't say minimum in a bad way. I just say it, it doesn't stop people from doing going beyond that. Right. But it is, no question. It is it's kind of a minimum, I'm guessing like a targeted minimum at which you can assure as best as one can that pets are provided for. That pets are provided for, that your uh-huh. pet care provider is committed to ongoing education and learning through a CEU program. Okay. And here's the kicker. If you want something really important for the pet parent, like right now, generally speaking, there is no accountability in pet care. Like if your dog got hurt at a doggy daycare, like who do you it's, complain to? Right. A lawyer. Like, n- nobody. <laughs> like, all you, right? like all you can do is go to a lawyer. Yeah. Right. And, no. then, and, and, and then I think good luck to you, like right. maybe. But does, right. it doesn't do anything for the next dog. Nope. You know? Like well, nothing. when you're a, when you're a PAC certified individual, so just to be clear, we don't have facilities that are certified. We have individuals. Individuals. Okay. 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 It is an okay. individual. Um, we are bound by a code of ethics. We Ooh. have a code of, just like a veterinarian has a code of ethics, right. just like yeah. the doctor yeah. takes a Hippocratic oath. Like we have a code of ethics. And one of the statements in our code of ethics is that the welfare of the animal is placed above all other business considerations, all other considerations ever. So if something were to happen in an area with a, a PAC certified individual, you can actually complain to PAC and there would be an investigation and that person could lose their certification. So we are actually, PAC is actually, uh, if pet parents listen for a second, because we are the only third party independent certification in the world for pet care. Only. Wow. Right here in the chat room. Yep, dropping it. That's a super what? important. We got to get the message out, right? So I know. It's not, it's not a club you join, right? It's not you like pay your money and no. I'm a member of this. It, it's nope. actually an accrediting uh, organization. Body. You have a test and you have yep. CE and that's, that's really fantastic yep. stuff. And I like, We are the I, only ones. And that's so there's a, and, there's a continuing education requirement. Right. Like it's I not no like idea. you just Absolutely. get it one time and that's yeah. it. So what does that look like? So here, <clears throat> in order to be... In the pet care industry, people interchange certificate and certification all the time. All the time. So here's the thing. Here's what pet parents need to know and pet care providers who are trying to seek certification. Mm -hmm. In order to actually be certification, true certification, by definition, it needs to be time bound and have an expiry date. And it needs to be revocable. If, if right. you, if you break the rules right. Right, or <laughs> right. the code of ethics, so you can, there's always a threat that if you don't abide by these rules, you could lose your certification. So people are like, you know, pay $200, take my course at the end of my course, take my test. That's a, a certificate. certificate, right? Which is suitable great. for framing, but <laughs> yep, absolutely. And it's a great way to prepare for the PAC <laughs> exam. Right. Through yeah. education. So yeah. once you become PAC certified, it's only good for three years. And you have a minimum, wow. yeah, you have a minimum level number of continuing education credits that you need to obtain before you expire in order to renew that. Wow, so, not before you expire, but before your accreditation right. expires. That's right. Maybe yeah, before well, you expire as well. But. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How, so how long, how, you, you, you may have said this already and I apologize, but how long have you guys, uh, how long has PAC been around? The first exam, was, we have three levels of exams. Oh my goodness. Yep. There's three wow. different exams that you can take depending on 
uh, what role you perform in the organization. But the first ever was um, administered in November of 2016. Okay. Um, I sat for that one. Yeah, we're only five but years not, old. Yeah, but not That's brand fantastic. new. It's been around for you know for a while, and, and no, it's, I mean, not it's not like, like a hundred years year, old. But this but is great. This is perfect. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The first I was one of the first fourteen people to become certified at the provider level. The first Did, time the the test was ever taken. You wow. had to take the test. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, Why would she not have to take the test? It would. It would. It would. You know. Not great. You got to prove it. Yeah, you got, that's you got fair. It. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that's like a fair approach. You yeah. know that you have to take it too. It's not like you're just like, oh well, I'm grandfathered in. You yeah. know, nope. you got to take the test. Not, talks to talk take and the walk test. to walk. Yeah, that's you the prove fair your mix. knowledge. Yeah, <clears throat> and it's international. It's available all over the globe. We just had somebody sit for their operator level in Brazil. Uh, one of our former board members is from Singapore. Wow. Um, yeah, and it's wow. administered third party. So. So PAC, the board of directors, we will come up with using subject matter experts to come up with the exam questions. We submit uh -huh. them to a professional testing corporation in New York. They help us make sure there's no bias. That they validate no the test. Right. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Right. And then they administer it through an organization called Prometric, where yep. you can either schedule and go to a testing center, a proctored yep. testing center, or now for the first time, just in June of 2021, we opened up remote proctoring. So wherever you have a stable internet connection, you can have somebody, you still have to check in and do your security checks and somebody will be on your screen watching mm -hmm. you take the test, but it is still yeah. proctored. So, so is there a practical component to it? I mean, like, is there, um, because I can know that it's not like wise, intelligent, or like a good thing to do to let Cosette jump off of, you know, a six foot table onto a, a ceramic tile floor, right? I can know that, but, mm -hmm. but realizing how I can safely put her down, right? Whether she wants to be put down or not. Um, and by, and a, by put down, you mean set down, right? Right. Like set down. We're using all kinds oh, of bad phrases here. Let's, <laughs> oh, let's I'm just, so sorry. you know, if we're going to get into linguistics, <laughs> yes. let's, uh, let's, semantics are uh, important. Thank you very much. Yeah, right. Jason, do you see this? This I is someone it. who's pointing out the rules to me. I, I love it. <gasps> it's fantastic. Saying. It's like my whole week has just yeah. been made. That's great. Um, so, but recognizing how to do that appropriately with her because you know i guess because of because i'm a veterinarian right i'm thinking i'm wondering about animal handling and stuff like that so how do you address that or do you in the PAC program or credentialing yep there, like, what PAC is, that? is for for animal professionals okay. definition of professional you accept money in exchange for a product yeah. or service 100%. it doesn't matter how much money that's right right so right you're professional so um there are prerequisites to sitting for the exam so okay the, 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 the three levels of examination that we have, we have the operator level, uh -huh. okay, and that's designed predominantly for people who own and operate their own facility or service. doesn't okay. have to be a brick and mortar. Okay. It can be uh, grooming. It can be pet walking, pet Dog sitting. walking. Yeah. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Um, so there's the owner operator. Then there's the manager level. Okay. So people who work a lot with the animals firsthand, but also manage a group of people. Mm -hmm. um, or the facility itself, the mm -hmm. operation. And then there's the provider level. So that's, so those are the people like hands on, you know, getting poop on their sweatshirt every day, you know, right. like that, those, the people that are 99.9% .9 hands on with the animals. Yeah. But there are prerequisites. Like you, you can't just, um, you can't be a pet parent and sit for the pack exam. You need to have like the provider level. You have to have at least a minimum of 400 paid hours in the industry before you can even apply to take it. Oh, interesting. Um, you know, the manager exam has its own set of, you know, you have to be in a, in a leadership position for a minimum uh -huh. of year and have a minimum of, you know, 3,000 hours. Uh, you know, there are prerequisites. Hey, you and guys are right? This, this, is, this, yeah, this no. is good stuff. This it is makes it because it doesn't do any good to have an easy peasy, lemon squeezy mm -hmm. situation, right? So you have to have or some exam. stringent starting level. It's really good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, and, and people who say, you know what, well, I volunteered at a shelter for five years. Yep, that's not paid. You did not do that professionally. So you did it when it was either convenient or maybe you even committed to a, a structured schedule and that's great, but yep. you're not a paid professional. This yeah. is for yeah. industry 
professionals. Yeah, good, yep. good for you, and that's to, great, to but you that. didn't have a ton of responsibility. It's because of accountability and responsibility that comes along with being paid, I think, is the yes. deal, right? That, that's a 100%. Yeah. Because if you let Cosette jump off that six-foot table on a ceramic tile floor <laughs> and you can't be fired, I'm going to be mad. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Who is accountable and to right. whom? Exactly. Yes. Right. And, th- and this is the issue. So PAC was created – you know, back in, you know, 2014 or whichever, the brainchild of Susan Briggs from the, the Duggars and Charlotte okay. Biggs, formerly of the IBPSA, uh, now with the Duggars. But uh, they, they sat down and, 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 and in the industry, we've always been hoping for this, but nobody actually wanted to do it. You know, that situation. Well, it's because it's tricky. Because it's, it's tricky. It's like every, it's every industry and there's, there's so many variables. That's what I think is wonderful about animal lovers is that animal lovers are the original, um, original inclusive people because they, by definition, right, they love something that looks nothing like them, right. you know, right. um, and can't really talk to them in the way that, that most people do, right? And so you have, there's so many variables when you talk about animal care that coming up with a fair and um, administrable set of um, minimum um, standards is really tricky. It uh, is. Because, because internationally. Interna- I mean, then you added that, That's that layer. Almost impossible, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, it's and tough. you're. Yeah. So, so that, that, I think that's a laudable um, and admirable accomplishment, just coming up with standards that can be fairly and appropriately administered, but then to have it become like a legit program um, over the last five years is incredible. So how, so how many, um, uh, so what are they called? Like if, if you have, I guess you're certified, is that? Yeah. We get letters too now. (laughs) (laughs) We have legit letters. <laughs> so if you're so so the the professional would be then referred to as a PAC certified professional. Is that That's right? right. Okay. Yep, a PAC so certified professional. PAC cert. How many PAC certified professionals currently are there? We have about two hundred in the world. Oh my god! Yeah. yeah. So, I think so for ton. example. Here in I do, Canada. Uh, no, but seriously, I think that is a ton because it's not e- it's not an e- it, it's not an e- it actually adds credibility to to the certification if it's not easy. I think that's, I think that's great. Um, it's not required. Jason, you yeah. could, you can open you, because you want to tomorrow. prove your professionalism and, and it's just going to yeah. raise the level of, of all. And I think the goal is to raise the level of animal care worldwide. And I think this that's is, right. uh, you know, um, g- going to, now, to do that. Right. I'm very happy to say, you know what, I, I will help anybody. I will educate anybody, all of that. So we want to make it so that the norm is PAC certification or mm-hmm. independent third-party certification. So it's the expectation. And that's the right. expectation. And you know what? Pet parents should be able to expect that the people caring for their pet know what they're doing. We saw that they, passion they, come out a little bit. We saw it. A bit. We're seeing <laughs> it. We're, we're, we're want, feeling it. We're hearing it. Absolutely. <laughs> I want the pet parent to go in and say, are you certified right. to do this yeah. for a living? So in Canada, yeah. I am one of only two people certified at the operator level. I'm the one of two people certified to operate a kennel in Can- a kennel in Canada, and wow. that I say that there's some degree of pride, Should but there's be. a ton of fear. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we got like, we have to get you know the word out. Do you know how many kennels right? are in Canada? Yeah. Right. And there's only two of us that are actually right. certified to do it for a living. Well, and but that, and that's the thing. But the but but it, it it's difficult because if if pet. If, if pet owners, pet parents, if, if they're not asking for it in a consumer-driven industry, then there's there, people, professionals, they may not be aware of the program, but after your time in the chat room, hello, right? Um, and number two, if, if it's not necessary because pet parents aren't asking about it, right. They're not going to do it. You and know? and when you hard. ask pet professionals, you say, why aren't you certified? They're like, I'm full all the time. Why bother? Right. What, it, it's not about being full. and make, It's about cleaning up our industry. Right. Mm-hmm. So if everybody that is qualified, like really yeah. qualified and educated is certified, then I'm very happy to let all of the other ones who got into this business for the wrong reasons fall by the wayside and go bankrupt. I'm very happy to, to see that happen. Okay, so here's you know, my question then, because we're going down, we're going down a trail here, and um, 
I, uh, we, we try to be very fair. So here's my question with your, not, with not you, Stephanie Shipley, but with PAC, because now yep. you, you, your role in PAC is as the, I'm the chair. Chair. Right. Yes. Okay. We're not bringing schleps into the <clears throat> chat room, right? So the chair is the chair of PAC. What is the approach for someone who fails to achieve certification? So what if I, I've been working in the industry, I didn't know you existed, I didn't know, or I didn't know any better, but I find out about it and I say, oh man, I'm going to do that. And I apply and I get my credentials approved. I have all the hours that are necessary. Um, and I sit the exam and I fail. Mm -hmm. What happens then? You can try to take it again. Okay. You can Is, absolutely try to take it again. It's, it's going to be a different exam. It, yeah. It's going to be different questions. There's going to be that this exam is a living exam. We're constantly writing items that are being scrutinized by PTC. So you can, you can take it if, and we do have people fail every time. It's not an easy exam. I'll be honest. Cause if it was, but, you should, but people should fail, right? Should. Like, I mean, right. some people right. should fail or else you, there's no point in the exam. Right. right. It would um, just be a cash grab, right? Right. right. Exactly. Pay me your X number of dollars and I'll give you some no, letters that's, after. That's the then club. It, it doesn't mean the club, right? Yeah. That's right. That's okay. right. Then that's just a purchased membership in a group, right? Exactly. So, but so, but is, does anything happen in an effort to um, kind of reach the hand down to help that person to raise up their standard like is there a program for that yet and there may not be because 2016 is not that long ago right. um for pack to be in existence and so maybe so that hasn't happened yet you got to remember that in order to maintain our third party status and independent certification we cannot provide education oh good we cannot point. educate good we point. can point people to valuable sources of education right, but but okay. I think that's what but that's I'm just the talking same about. thing. Hey, yeah. yeah. Hey, right. listen, you didn't you didn't do what right this time. Here's here's what you're lacking. Go right. learn. Uh, we can't help you. Come but back here, and you try can again. go here, learn, and we'll be more than happy right. to provide you with another opportunity um, uh, to be certified. Try again. Okay. Perfect. Yep. Yeah. And and we do facilitate. We have webinars that we bring yep. guests on uh, oh, that do education great. webinars. We can't okay. do it ourselves, but we can yeah. facilitate. Right. 100%. We have a okay, pack great. study group on Facebook. <laughs> Awesome. So if you're planning, like you can reach out to other people who are studying. We have an online practice exam that you can take in oh. preparation to see your areas of opportunity awesome. and strengths. So, you know, if I'm not really good in, you know, the, the pet first aid CPR area mm -hmm, of it, mm -hmm. may, where should I go? Here, I go to the PAC website. I see the resource list. I say, oh, I take that, you know, I take that pet first aid CPR course. So I can brush up and prepare for the exam. We're very happy to mm -hmm. help you prepare, but I, I just can't pack in order. We protect that third party status because we're the only ones. So yeah, but I didn't, I didn't even think that. about that, but you're right because then otherwise, so, so that's appropriate. But I guess that's what I'm getting at that Dr. Jason brings up is like, yeah, we know you can't, you can't educate, but you, like, I guess what, what I'm wondering is do you just, like leave that person out there in limbo like no. well you failed maybe you should be going so right. yeah. you know no, no, we no. reach out and we get we get all of the scores and and stuff like uh -huh. that so we do the the data analysis of it and we would reach out to that person and say hey you know what why don't i put you in touch with a friend of mine in north carolina who okay. took that exam and maybe they can help you pre better prepare for the next time you take it you can only take it there's three two-week testing windows a annually uh -huh. So you can take it in March, you can take it in June, you can take it in November. Um, you can't just take it the next day and keep trying. That, and no. I think that's legitimate too because you have to realize Again. there's some remediation that's necessary, right? Right. Like you can't no, just, just not, all of this is great and it sound, may know. sound harsh, but it just lends credibility to once, once you su successfully pass. It lends a ton of credibility. Oh, man. And it sounds right. like you guys have worked out and really thought this through uh, and have all of the stuff covered. We just need to get the word out. Yeah, right? like we just need to get it out there. That, hey, this, this does exist, um, and it should exist, and and maybe should have existed before now. But here's what it is. Let's get the word out yeah. and get everybody certified. Mm -hmm. You know, and it, and you know the message I would say to the the pet care providers, the people working in the industry. Again, if you're good at what you do and you know what you're doing, take two hours and go and prove it, and join that group of people who say right. it's mm -hmm. important to me. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're a pet parent, start asking for it. Are you certified? 
Right. That's what I was going to say. So, so as a pet, like as a pet, a pet owner goes into a place, how, how, like, how do they know? Because here's the thing. So what if I live in like a rural area, like you're talking about, and I got like two choices for boarding kennels. Okay. And one of them, like my sister's cousin's nephew's daughter, like doesn't like, and there's a situation. So can't go there. So now I'm down to one. And if I go in there and I say, are you guys certified? And they say, no, I'm still going to board my pet there. What are yeah. they going to do to my pet? But you, you know, know what I mean? I like, would say, I would say inquired. to that kennel owner, would you consider it? Oh. Like, are you certified? No. Would you consider it? It's important to me. Okay. Right? It's important to me, the pet parent, because we just don't. And for me, I will only ever refer to other pack certified individuals. Mm-hmm. I will. That's and, that and is tricky clients, in Canada, apparently, right now. <laughs> it very much is. We have some providers. Uh, we have some yeah. providers. Um, we actually had uh, a local animal shelter um, just sit for the the pack exam in uh, in June of this year. They will be the first provided any of them pass, successfully pass the exam. They, they will be the first wow. animal shelter uh, employees to, in the world to to be pack certified. To be to be certified. I mean, there's no other certification. So to be certified, no, there, there, and, and, and there's none. Stop. And again, I think that's interesting. So, so yeah, pet, you know, pet gonna, owners have to be the drive, like you said, Doctor Jen. It's a it. consumer-driven industry for sure. And if we can't get out there for for um, the people, you know, the pet owners and the pet parents to come out and ask yeah. for it, you know, they, they have they have to know it's there. So we have to get the word out to say, hey, listen, there is a certification, hundred percent. We do it everywhere else. I mean, you wouldn't send Jason. You have children. everywhere, you even your... mechanics, right? There's ACE. There's right? all kinds of certification yes. uh, situation, but, and it's a big deal. Even I don't know anything about cars. Yeah. I'd rather go to a certified place than a non-certified place, especially if I know that the well, certification is a big deal, right? And here's the issue in our industry. And here is the fundamental. In- there is an assumption that yes. if you're doing this for a living, you are certified. Oh, I was going to ask you, do people assume that's a government-driven they, situation, right? Sure they they, no, Jason, in, in the U.S., 100% people, like if you yeah. like people that come in to the exam room, right, to see yeah. me, um, they presume that the kennel next door, which is a totally independent business that we have nothing to do with, zero. I've never even been inside of it. They presume that the veterinarian owns that kennel right. and runs it and walks it over and there every five it. minutes to check like, on stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. I've never, like, we have nothing to do with it. And, you know, they, so it's, it's very interesting people's assumptions about what goes on in the pet care industry. Um, and, and so, okay, so, so we need pet owners to start, to become aware and start asking about it um, and, and kind of demanding it. Like we always say, like, if you don't have it, demand it. Right. Um, so, so we need that. But, um, and we're going to get, like, you'll be in the show notes, people, like, the links to, like, wh- you know, where is PAC, what is PAC, and, and if you want to get more information, don't worry, we're going to give you all that information, and we'll say it at the end. But um, I, I guess, kind of for me, if, if I'm just curious, can you share, like, an example of, like, maybe a section? Because I'm sure it's broken down into sections of, mm-hmm. of knowledge, right? So, for example, like, w- what is one, like, one or two things um, just off the top of your head that, uh, for example, you know, a, a certified provider is going to be well aware of? They are going to be tested on animal husbandry, animal care. Uh, they're going to be tested on animal common. husbandry. Does not mean they're certified to marry Mary. dogs. To each other. <laughs> Correct. Yeah, they're or not cats ordained. To each other. <laughs> no. They're not ordained. <laughs> they're not ordained. <laughs> but, but animal husbandry, the, all the things that go the, along with providing care, so feeding, right. caring. Yeah, all that. But then housing. they also have to be well versed in communicable diseases. Diseases. <gasps> uh oh. You know, they have to know <laughs> the difference jam. between zoonotic. <laughs> Diseases versus not yeah. how fomites. Uh, Great, you know that that you have to know Same how all the fancy are words. Right, you have to know. Like if you had a case of giardia, yeah, like how is that a big deal? Gi- well, yeah, it's a big. And how do you get <laughs> rid of that? Like to keep other pets safe. Um, yeah, what do you do in emergency situations? There's a bit on nutrition. There's a bit on 
um, processes, staff management expectations, uh-huh. like how so, should you conduct yourself as a professional in this industry? So did you have veterinarians that had input on the, well, I, I don't know that you were involved in the creation of the standards, but um, do they, do you have veterinary input? Are the standards kind of evaluated? You said it's a living dynamic test. Yeah. Are the standards evaluated every couple of years, every five years, every, how does that work? The standards and the the current test questions and the upcoming test questions are evaluated every six months. Oh my gosh. So we take a look at that new things that come into the industry that Mm -hmm. maybe weren't prevalent three years ago. I mean, if we're going to ask our people to maintain their their certification through ongoing education, then shouldn't the test reflect that? Yeah. Right. So we do consult. We get a little bit of pushback from the veterinarians um, really? You know, that, like, well, so what yeah. is, what do you, for, for what reason do you think? Um, I don't Cause you know, know, we know some, so, but you know, there's a couple <laughs> of cool ones out there, but, um, not many. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just, I love our local, I love our vets. I love yes. our vets, but I don't think they see pet boarding daycare train as, um, as crucial to be certified as they do the, the, the medical side of things through aha accreditation like this is very similar to race certification to put it in the vet world so if there's veterinary it's like you have aha accreditation for the for the hospital right and then people who work at the hospital can be race certified it's, yeah. it's similar to that so, but we find it hard to to get veterinarians to partner with us to help submit exam questions so Usually I'm reaching out or some of our board members are reaching out to veterinarians who are friends of ours to look over some yeah. of the questions. Got it. Yeah. Um, but wow. we're trying now as, as the current chair, we're trying to reach out to the ABMA, to the CVMA, yeah. to maybe uh-huh. have a booth at one of their trade shows at uh-huh. one of their annual conferences to raise uh-huh. awareness because we'd like to see veterinarians um, supporting the fact that certification is important. And yeah, so I it, mean, it, it, I'm sort of surprised they vets, don't, right? right? Like, Aren't you, Dr. It, Jen? Yeah, I am. I don't Jason, know that like, no, I know, I but know even if know about it, but even even if they know, it, like, even if they're aware of it, like, I or unaware of it, standardization and some method by which you determine certification for capability and capacity, I, I think veterinarians inherently would would uh, would be open to that. Right. Especially because I, I don't I, I don't like to see pets that come to me from a pet care facility that has had problems. Less than ideal standards. Like, yeah. Right. Like so I, maybe I we'll wanna... put the plea out to the vets. Mm-hmm. Like why can't we have the vets start asking the pet care facilities to get certified? Yeah, I like this vet's going to start now that I now that I know about it. One hundred percent, I'll go next door for the first time ever. Well, what, what's it really important? Say. What's really important is is, <laughs> is veterinarians uh, and any any professional anywhere and anything. You know, they really they don't want to put their their reputation, their name, say, "Hey, go do this," unless they they know about it. And it sounds like That's once right. they learn a, a little bit about yeah. that, they'll understand that. Man, they really ha- this really isn't a join the club situation. This is a no. a stringent, uh, you know standard of mm-hmm. care. It's going to help me in the long run. It's not just going to be willy nilly. So I think all of the stuff that you talked about, we kind of go, wow, that's hard, right? It's good yeah. that it's hard. And I hate to say this, it's good that people don't pass every time. I mean, yep. you hate to be it that, is. but it's, it, it's actually a great. Um, it adds credibility. Um, and so I it think just legitimizes it, the whole process. Legit, that's what I've been looking for all the whole time. Legitimizes the whole process. Um, and it's not like, you know, my best friend is just here to join yes. my club here to get 20 bucks or whatever. It's really, cause there right. are unfortunately those sort of organizations out there, not necessarily in this industry, yep. but in, in the animal industry there is. And they and, have their role. They're called member organizations. Right. Member they organizations, have their role. right. And, and, and they provide information, but they don't provide card. any sort of accreditation. And I think accreditation yeah. is right. really important, right? I mean, we work really, really closely with the IBPSA. Right. Um, Carmen Rustenbeck was one of your previous guests in the, yes. in the chat we, room. We love Carmen and the yeah. IBPSA no, here in the chat she's, room. She's fantastic. And they yes. do fabulous education. They fabulous, do. And fabulous fact, education. In fact, you'll see a couple of us there. Well, I'm sure Stephanie, I feel like you're I feel like the pack will be large and very present at the IVPSA mm-hmm. conference. Right. And are you uh, doing Dr. the pet care conference? Dr. In Orlando Jason this year? and I will be there in Orlando. Keynote speaker. 
Oh, oh shit. no, speaker! Okay, so so we will all be uh, raising a glass um, together. But yeah, so if you so if you want more information, if if you are a pet care provider in the industry and you want more information, um, Stephanie, where where can they go to find yeah, more information you. about PAC? Our our social media is very very active on Facebook and Instagram. Our okay. website is uh, PAC Cert, so P A C C E R T dot org. And okay. there is actually a tab at the top specifically for pet parents. We what? recently, yeah, Amy Hillis, our vice chair, recently created a little checklist that pet parents can print off and go into a facility and ask all of the right questions and measure those facilities against each other. Okay, so veterinarians, uh, listen up. That's your key. You're going to go print absolutely. that out and you're going to give it to every new pet owner because there's a yep. bazillion of them right now post-COVID. And you're going to say, now that life has returned and you're saying, what do I do with this dog now or this cat or this bird or whatever? Uh, you're going to hand them that and say, you're going to take this. Yep. And you're gonna there's a spot for questions. up to three. You can tour three different facilities, make all, ask all the right questions, and then tally up a score and see which one comes out. One That's of the questions funny. is whether they are certified or not, whether yeah. they have pet first aid and CPR certification yeah. or not. Okay. Um, so there's that. There's, a, there's a, a, a video on there directed towards pet parents, educating them about the how do you know whether your pet care provider is actually qualified to do this or whether wow. they're just hopeful. So there's a, whole, yeah, there's a right, which is the case. They're they're hoping that somebody might be certified right. um, or know what they're doing. Yeah. So there's a there's a whole tab up there for pet care professionals, exam preparation, how to prepare for the exam, and then there's okay. a whole link on just just for pet parents. And okay. my mission as the chair here in 2021 is to get to the pet parents. The pet professionals have had five years to jump on the back of the truck. And if they've chosen not to, they've chosen not to. But now I'm looking at the pet parents right. and say, we've all had our chance as industry professionals to, to get on board. Yeah. Now the pet parents start They're driving the truck. It. Well, That's they're, they're driving the I truck. I mean, 100%, 100 right? they're going to be the one driving it. Um, Their yeah. pets deserve better. Right. Than, right. And, and we as pet care professionals in this industry yes. have an obligation to clean it up and keep it clean. Keep it clean, so, friends. Fantastic. Can you give us the website one more time? And then we'll, yeah. we'll put it in the notes, but one more time. Yeah, absolutely. It's P-A-C-C-E-R-T dot org. Perfect. That's yeah, fantastic. And, and if you have a question about the process, you can email us here um, at chatfieldshow.com, info at chatfieldshow.com, uh, or Jen or Jason at chatfieldshow.com. We will get the question answered, um, and we may answer it in the next episode. Who knows? Who knows? But if we do, if we answer your question in the next episode, there will be a package of show swag coming swag. to you. Swag. That's right. So, uh, yeah. So I, I just, I'm just, I, I love this. This, this, this is why we do the show, right? Chase is because right. No, it's just one of the, this is great. I love I it. had no idea. None. Um, I had no idea there were Which, such, I mean, I knew there were passionate people involved right. in pet care, but right. It's meeting Stephanie. This has just been fantastic. Yeah, um, and, and hearing about all the good work that, that, that yeah. they've done. Uh, I mean, it really is fantastic. And you guys have done a great job. So We have such yeah. a committed board. You, you uh, must. We do have a like, pet parent. Yeah. We do have a pet parent on the board. They keep us grounded, <laughs> right, to make sure that we yep. are reflecting what the pet parents actually right. want and, and what they need. Right. And they yeah. need assurance. And this is how you give it to them. Yeah, that's wonderful. I love it. Thank you so much for joining us today, Stephanie. It's been really fantastic. I hope that you'll come back. Um, oh, I'd love to. Because this, this is, is like, like a dream. Whole... This is a dream for me. Flattery will get you everywhere. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> so you've probably seen your subscriptions go up lately because yes. I have been sharing and sharing and sharing. And, uh, oh. and if a pet parent, by the way, if a pet parent out there is wondering if, if the, the facility they use is certified, if they have a certified person there, there's yeah. a directory right on our website. You can oh, go and even better. Wonderful search database. your state and yes. see who is certified in your state. That's wonderful. But, Make That's your wonderful. decisions. Make educated decisions for your pets. Oh, I love it. And so, pack. Make educated decisions for your pets. I love it. Uh, so that's it. Dropping some real knowledge in the chat room. That's Stephanie Shipley. I'm Dr. Jen the Vet. And I'm Dr. Jason. And uh, we hope to uh, like uh, have you guys join us again for some incredible stuff in the chat room on the next episode. Can't wait.
This episode is sponsored by Full Bucket Veterinary Strength Supplements. Use promo code CHATFIELDS to receive 20% off your first order from Full Bucket Veterinary Strength Supplements.